Hello folks, today we're examining Schlitz malt liquor with two whole people. Um, we were supposed to have a bigger group, but we had one little problem, and you know what that problem was, huh, Brandon? People couldn't find the beer. Couldn't find the beer, so hard to examine something you can't find. Uh, it's me in Louisiana and Brandon in Louisiana today. Um, here at in between 9 and 9.30 a.m. Um, would have gone on about five minutes earlier, but I had my speakers turned down and Brandon was like, hello, hello, what's going on? He could probably see me looking around and then <laughs> I, I see that he sent a message. Why can't you hear me? And I, and I looked and I realized my speakers were turned down. The volume was down. And I said, oh, oh boy. All right. Well, this bottle here actually is expired. It said May 25th, but I don't guess it'll make too big of a difference. Um, I bought, I, I was at racetrack in Kenner, Louisiana on US Highway 61 and I, they sell these 18 ounce bottles. And I went through the rack, you know, I was trying to go through the rack and um, I, they all said that date. So I was like, Psh. there's another place in Kenner on, it's called Star and they have a fantastic beer selection. Um, macro and craft and they have the best prices in the new orleans area that i can find star might have this for 99 cents a bottle but it was a dollar 19 at racetrack and they don't even sell this beer in my town anymore and it's it's pretty rare it's becoming pretty rare it used to be ubiquitous yeah i mean uh like i said i found this uh, i can find these in crowley these six packs uh the 16 ounce cans I can find it at the Winn Dixie. I also can find it at one of the uh, Tobacco Plus stores. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll be right back. I forgot to get something, but um, getting even harder to find in this format. The uh, 40 ounce oh, yeah. format. I found this at a uh, Shoprite in uh, Rain. Uh, the one that. Uh, you might know if I told you off air, you probably know exactly which one I was talking about. Or oh, not. the one where you get off the interstate and you go south. Yeah, on that one. Highway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. I know where it is. Yeah, and this one. Uh, I mean, apparently it sells pretty well over there because there's only two left, and the the date on this one was August tenth. Uh, oh, good. You got a fresh one. Um, they used to sell. You know, when I started drinking beer in February 1996. You used to, I guess, every store had Schlitz malt liquor, and then the forty-ounce bottles, the twelve-ounce bottles and cans, and then it just slowly got to where now you got to really search for it. And then John Sharon wanted to do it. He went over there into Louisville looking for it. Apparently, he couldn't find it because he never uh, got back with me. And then no one else could find it. They, they, they knew they couldn't get it. Um, I know in West Louisiana around. Um, you know those towns getting close to the Texas border, like Starks and mm -hmm. what is it, Toomey or something, Vinton? Yeah, Vinton, and uh, that's right by the border. Yeah, you can get the Schlitz, this one here, the Gold Bowl, the newest Schlitz malt liquor variety. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had this. I have not. I'm going to have to remember that if I'm uh, working out in that area one day. This came out around 2005. It's the strongest one. It's 8.5% uh, alcohol. Hmm. It's, v, it's called VSL, very smooth lager. Um, I guess, like someone called it, it's an imperial lager. <laughs> That's how you got to frame it, you know. You don't call it bum juice, you call it imperial lager. You know, and it really is not bum juice. If you want to drink bum juice, go get some stack. <laughs> horrendous. I bought that on U.S. Highway in Beaumont, Texas. That's horrendous. This thing is so bubbly, though. Look at the bubbles. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah not an etched glass it's just got it must have a hundred different t tight little bubble streams yeah this is what I've got here you can see and this is this is my Sam Adams glass and it's got a good head on it uh, it's very clear in appearance it's just such a good-looking beer you can see mine yeah I saw yours yeah. oh Schlitz glass. I bought this glass, I think, for a dollar at a flea market. Yeah. Remember those glasses used to be really cheap. They couldn't get rid of them. I don't have a Schlitz malt liquor glass. Um, maybe you could give the viewers 
whether they're going to be live viewers or, you know, could be someone watching this video five years from now, you know how that goes. These videos are really, they exist out of time. And that's why you'll notice I never do any like holiday videos or Cinco de Mayo type videos, anything like that, because once that day passes, then the video, that, that, that time captive, captive theme is irrelevant. Right. I've got people commenting on videos I made in November 2010 as though it was today. You know, they're like, right. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I made that video going on five years ago. Um, this beer did, you, you're going to tell the audience when this beer debuted, eh? Uh, I, yeah, I believe it was uh, introduced in 1965 with the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company, if I'm correct by that. It's been a Paps brand since 1999, since Paps acquired Stroh's. Uh, right. Stroh's had acquired Schlitz in, what was it, 81 or something like that? 82. 82. Okay, that was close. Oh. And this this beer had a, had a pretty heavy advertisement uh, campaign, I remember, in the... Uh, very strong, even until the late 80s. Yeah. I still remember there was a commercial. Uh, they had uh, one commercial with the platters and uh, Cool in the Gang. And Cool in the Gang was doing the showing up the Schlitz malt liquor. So that was, uh, that was a pretty uh, cool commercial, too. It is available online if you ever want to look at it. Yeah, on YouTube. Yep. Maybe, some other, maybe some other platforms. Uh, um, I think they test marketed this in 63. Because I looked at, uh, 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 did some internet searches, and there were some really old stickers and, and and like stuff that would hang up in a bar room, point of sale stuff from '63 and '64, and it was a little different design. So I guess they were testing it out in a few little markets. They'll do that with beers, and I guess the results were positive, so they decided to roll it out nationally 50 years ago. So this is the 50th anniversary of Schlitz Malt Liquor. Naturally, with the uh, Pabst Brewing Company being cash poor you'll see no 50th anniversary promotion, right? <laughs> that I'm aware of. Right. You don't see a 50th anniversary promotion. I mean, that would be a pretty, personally, I'd like to see a 50th anniversary uh, promotion uh, label on, on a bottle like this, or even just on the can, which I'm, I assume is much cheaper for uh, for PAPS and their budget. They just put it in a, just do a special label on the one of the 16 ounce cans or something. And, and of course, uh, now I, I, oh, go ahead. Now, they did do a 50th anniversary can for the Colt 45, you might remember. It was like that. They made it look like the original six, 1963 design. I bought a can. Um, it, it becomes overwhelming after a while. You cannot buy all these can variants. These companies know that people collect cans and bottles. So now, it was always the, that way, even when I started this thing 19 years ago. But now, it's like every week, there's multiple variants of cans and bottles from all these companies. But what were you going to say? Uh, well, I was going to say is that, I mean, at least with this beer, I mean, it's a great bargain as far as that goes. I mean, remember, I got this one, uh, this 40-ounce version was about less than $2, this 40-ounce bottle, and the, uh, the cans. I picked it, uh, the Tobacco Plus was a five ninety nine dollars uh, before tax for the six-pack of 16-ounce cans. Yep. That's almost a dollar a beer before tax. That is just a bargain. Yeah, and um, I noticed that around here, the uh, Colt 45 – which is the malt liquor from Paps they sell around here is a dollar ninety nine a forty ounce, which I think is cheaper than any of the other ones, mm -hmm. uh, forty ounces. Um, right. One thing I like about Paps Brewing Company is they kept the glass bottles. Right. Where mm -hmm. Miller went to the uh, plastic bottles for their uh, lower price beers. Paps decided to keep the glass because they know that there's a kind of a malt liquor culture where these guys like to do the whatever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> kind of feed into that culture, whatever. You know, that culture is different than what they were trying to target in 1965, isn't it? Right. They were trying to target more of an upper class uh, crowd. I mean, that's where you also had uh, other Small liquor doing the same things, but you have Country Club. They were trying to market more towards the uh, upper class. And there was a lot of malt liquor being marketed towards, uh, but the marketing they 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 figured out said, well, there's a there's demographic we're leaving out, and there's one group that's consuming malt liquor more than any other group, so let's market towards them. Yeah, um, Country Club was the first in 1951, and. 
you'll notice their ads all the way up until the early 70s were always um, white, upper middle class. Yeah. Um, kind of like, you know, targeting people at a country club. And it, it was to, I guess it was trying to kind of get people to drink beer that normally would drink harder drinks. Right. And so it was an attempt to um, pull in the hard liquor people into the beer market by offering a, a, a higher strength beer. But then, of course, they had the U.S. regulations, so you know the story with that. They have to call it liquor instead of extra strong beer. You cross the border into Canada, they'll sell Schlitz, Blue Bull, but it's called Schlitz Extra Strong. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. The American companies will have these uh, advertisements where they're coy about it, you know, like Country Club, giving you more of what you're looking for in beer. Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious what that means, but... Right. But it's it's a cagey, so you could take it either way. The company could say uh, they could have deniability. Uh, they could have said, "Well, we mean more flavor, right? More right." But of course, yeah. it's more alcohol. Yeah, exactly. And uh, exactly. it's unfortunate that uh, malt liquor does have the stigma attached to it now, and that's very unfortunate, in my opinion. Yeah, and then they they came out with the let's see, they had the the country club in fifty one. Colt 45 and 63. Now, that's another sort of fiction that they invented. They claim it was named after this football player for the Baltimore Colts, number 45. I think that's something that the uh, National Brewing Company came up with to try to give themselves cover from trade uh, in front, trade regulations because um, I think what they really were trying to make it was Colt 45 the gun. <laughs> Yeah, connote power, um, but then they knew that they were going to catch hell for that, so they said, "Well, oh no, it's we're naming it after this obscure football player, uh, number forty-five. Who, you know, if you don't live in Baltimore, you probably never heard of him." So um, that was pretty clever. Um, then the Schlitz malt liquor came out, and then what else did we have? We had the uh, Old English eight hundred, which is really an old one. Um, Mm -hmm. You look at Old English 800, it goes back to the 1940s, and it was called Old English 800 Stout Malt Liquor. Hmm. Yeah, I've seen old cans from, look like the 40s, and uh, it was 8%. 8%, Old English 800 Stout. But it was like Stout Lager. What they meant with Stout was like super strong. 8%, now that's pretty high in, in the 1940s. But then it got dialed back to 6%, although if you go to California, Old English is still 7.5. So they kind of retain that strength. And then, there, of course, there's the Old English high gravity. I don't know if you get that where you live. We sure don't get it here, and that's 8%. So that's the original, really. Yeah, I used to get that. I got that one time in Mississippi when I was out there. Uh, that's pretty good malt liquor. I mean, it's pretty good beer as it is. Yeah. Here is a bottle. Um, so this is sort of like what Old English was supposed to be in the from the get go. Um, we also had uh, Mickey's Fine Malt Liquor, and I believe it was sixty four. Um, Budweiser Malt Liquor, I, came, I believe, came out in nineteen seventy or seventy one. There was a Miller Malt Liquor which disappeared. Well, in fact, there were. In fact. Aside from Coors Brewing, I believe every company made malt liquors right. because to get in on the extra strength beer. Uh, I don't know why Coors never did. They well, did introduce a malt liquor last year in Canada called Coors. I believe it's called Coors Alpine or Coors something to do with mountains, and it's six percent. But it's only sold in Canada for whatever bizarre reason. But I don't think I don't think the Canadians can get Coors Banquet beer. <laughs> no, and, and up and really up until '91, you couldn't get Coors Banquet East Mississippi. You know, West, yeah, East 81. Mississippi. Yeah. Eighty-one. Eighty-one. Yeah, eighty-one. Coors Banquet wasn't available in Indiana until 1991. Right. Right. Okay. That, you know, uh, um, people. You might say, "How do you know all that?" Oh, just reading their website. <laughs> um, now, Brandon, ha before I want to, I want to show you some bottles and stuff and talk about Shreveport. But 
what do you think about the beer itself? I mean, actually, I mean, actually, it is a beer examination we're doing. So right. Well, I mean, as far as the beer goes, it's not liquor. I mean, it's uh, it's not offensive. It's got a, uh, it it is, does have more flavor than a regular Schlitz because I do drink on a regular basis. Uh, I think of it just as the stronger version of Schlitz. If you like Schlitz, it's not a stretch. You'll like Schlitz malt liquor. Yeah. I agree. I'll be right back. I'm going to get the rest of it. I didn't want it to warm too much. All right. Um, people, you know, you're not supposed to let a high, uh, extra strong lager get warm. Uh, and then some people will say, well, that's a fault. That That's because it's bad. It doesn't mean it's bad. Different styles of beer require different things. Okay. Right. So if it's, if it's, um, A Russian Imperial Stout, you might want to let it warm a little while, but this is not. This is an extra strong American lager made with more than likely corn, yellow corn grits, or even more likely corn syrup, whatever, okay? It's made to be drank ice cold. In my opinion, that is not like some um, indication of inferiority because it's made to drink be drunk ice cold. I don't have a, I don't think most people have a real problem with drinking ice cold beer. That's sort of like an American tradition. Mm -hmm. Is it not? Yeah, it pretty much is. I mean, you, you lost, I think uh, there are some places like Twin Peaks that are, I might be wrong, but they advertise they have the coldest draft lines and stuff like that. So uh, pretty much to get people in there to drink ice cold draft beer. I don't yeah. know. I think I'm correct on that. Is that Twin Peaks or some other chain? I've never been there, but um, I've heard about it. Yeah. So, you know, everything is not everything else. And I think in, in the beer world, you know, you, you're you not on Facebook, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you get on there and, you, you know, it's you get people that want everything to be everything. Right, right. Everything has to be the same. But everything is not the same. Everything is not everything else. And um, like I got into this big war last night. Like I was on this website, this Facebook page, and the guy, the guy was obviously trying to um, – set off a grenade so he he talks about this craft beer it's very good i can't remember what he was talking about he was saying oh this is very good you know but then he's got to betray this insecurity this is the problem i have a lot of times in the craft beer where there's this insecurity like he's he says oh this beer is awesome and i was thinking to myself it really is then he says now here's the comma comma now and I, why did he bring this up? This is irrelevant to the beer he's talking about. He says, now, if I was at a party and somebody offered me Bud Light or something like that, he said, Bud Light or Miller Light, I would take a few sips in front of everybody to fit in. And then when nobody was looking, I would dump it down the drain. And I'm thinking to myself, why do you have to mention that? It's like you're looking to start something. So, you know, me, I typed in, hey, uh, I drank two, I'm drinking two natural ice beers tonight. I'm, I've had two natural ice. I'm on my second one. It's really pleasant and enjoyable. That's all I wrote, just as a point of reference. Mm -hmm. But I just waited. I knew, you know, it's like the guy was looking for trouble. So then he comes back. Oh, yeah, why don't you go sit in your backyard with your, uh, and do a beer review of it? And I said, oh, here we go, you know, and then he's saying, uh, take your glasses off, take your hat off, and uh, do a review. I said, I don't know what the problem is. I said, um, I drank, I've done a review of natural ice. And I said, in fact, natural ice won um, a gold medal in, in 2013 at the Great American Beer Festival and natural ice won a gold, a silver medal in 2008. And then he, then he comes back, I don't wanna hear that Great American Beer Festival bullshit. You know, natural ice is horrible. He's definitive, right? Like <laughs> taste is not subjective, it's objective. I said, this guy's like the most stereotypical beer snob, right? So right. natural ice is horrible. That is an objective reality. No one likes it. Really? No one likes it. That's why it's the one of the top 20 selling beers in America, because no one likes it. Right. Said, so in other words, okay, now remember now, you got to look at how people prefer, preface things. I don't want to hear about that GABFBS. 
So right. basically what you're saying is the fact that Natural Ice won a gold medal at the Great American Beer Festival is irrelevant. So what that means is that no beer that has ever won a medal at that festival can talk about that or mention it in that, in, in other words, that doesn't matter. So if Bourbon County, uh, you know, if Goose Island Bourbon County Stout won a gold medal in certain years at that festival, it doesn't mean anything. Because mm -hmm. the people that judge that beer are idiots. They have no palate and the festival is irrelevant. People that attend the festival are fools. They don't understand beer and the festival should not exist. This is basically what he's saying. So I'm saying, wow, you know, what are you talking about? You know, and then he just kept making these personal attacks. You know how it is in the beer community. Right, right. I, just, I, I didn't attack him personally. I just said, well, you know, um, a lot of people like different beers and and then other, pe other people in the, in the group jumped in and said, hey, you know, you need to you need to chill out, man, you know, and um, at least they, you know, they backed me up. So because they, they could see that he was, um, he wasn't making any sense. But anyway, back to this beer. And I, I'm bringing that up because this beer is, this is the kind of beer here that we're drinking and enjoying. And I think we're both enjoying it. Yeah, well, I enjoyed it. And I have to say, uh, it's one of those that, I mean, even uh, with its higher alcohol content, I mean, it still, ha it still, is not so overpowering in terms of uh, heaviness that, oh, well, if, like, say, if I was working outside, for example, just doing a lot of stuff, work outside on a hot day, I could still come in and drink this beer and not feel bad about it. Oh, I agree with that. And, um, but this is the kind of beer that if you, if you even mention it, then here they're going to come. You know what I mean? Certain mm -hmm. people are going to jump in there and start coming at you, you know, but I don't really care personally. Um, I think it has a sweet flavor, but it's not overly sweet. Right. It has body, but it's not too heavy. It's it's kind of light to medium. Wouldn't you say it's light to medium? Uh yeah. And in that sense, it's uh in that sense it's very similar to natural ice in, in terms of body and in oh. terms of uh IBUs, I feel in terms of the bitterness. I think I, I believe I'd have to do a taste taste test just side by side, just detection of bitterness, but uh Natural ice and uh, Schlitz malt liquor to me they have very similar levels of bitterness, but they're not overwhelmingly bitter beers. Yeah, you could have a real challenge trying to differentiate them in a blind taste test. I think. Right. Um, even Natty Daddy at six percent could be hard to differentiate. Uh, so if you're looking for um, an extra strong but not super strong uh, lager beer, and you and you you go in the store and you see Schlitz OML or nat natural ice or natty daddy, I would say just shop price because you're not gonna um you're gonna you're gonna win if you could shop price. I agree. And the good thing about uh at least uh with natural ice, there are some places we can find the 30 packs, uh get them like bit like fifteen dollars or stuff. Uh, I was on US I'm sorry, I was on um Interstate fifty nine in Mississippi last year and um I stopped at this gas station to use the bathroom and get some gas, I believe, gasoline. And they had natural ice 30 packs for $14.99. It might have been $13.99. I said, wow, that's I almost want to get it just to have it. You know what I mean? Because that's an incredibly low price. Mm -hmm. um, and and I don't care what this guy said on he probably watches all my videos. You know, he <laughs> you know these kind of people like, I hate your videos, but I watch all of them. Right. Why? My I'm I, there are some people that do video reviews that I really don't like what they do. So guess what? I don't watch them. But um, I don't worry about them. But uh, anyway, you know, he, he would say, why are you buying it? It's not, it's not even worth it if it's free. But, you know, a lot of these people in that, coming from that perspective that anything mass produced is horrible, they, they don't really know what horrible is. I'm going to tell you, look, if you think Schlitz malt liquor and natural ice is horrible, I gotta tell you, it is not horrible. If you want to try a horrible beer, you know, come back and talk to me after you've drank Camo Black Ice. I found your blog. Oh, the beer brands. <laughs> come back to me. Come back to me after you've drank Super Brew 15 from Bucharest, Romania. Come back to me after you've drank Earthquake High Gravity 
or street legal, 40 street legal. Those beers really are horrible. Okay. Yeah. Now, if somebody wants to tell me natural ice or Schlitz malt liquor is dull or it's not super flavorful, I'll say, okay, you know, I can go along with that. It's not um, Sierra Nevada Torpedo, but, you know, of course, it wasn't created to be that. It's not um, Founders KBS. But, you know, I think everybody knew that already. Right. But if you haven't had... Super Brew 15, and I'm telling you, Super Brew 15, you cannot drink it. I bought a bomber of that. And I, I was at Calandra's in Baton Rouge, of all places, and I said, well, okay, let me try this out. 15% alcohol? I said, I don't know what this is about. I bought it. It was unbelievable. It was like you drank it and you just, it's like you freeze frame. Okay. That's what you do. It's like your computer seized up, but it's you seizing up. <laughs> uh, it's like you can't, you can't, you say, oh, this exists. It's like you're so like dumbfounded that it actually exists. So, you know, if, if you haven't walked in my shoes, you know, you might have driven by the ghetto, but if you haven't been in the ghetto, don't, don't talk to me about what's bad. Because that's it's it's un, it's like profoundly bad. It's exquisitely bad. It's mm -hmm. it's almost like they intentionally said we're going to make the worst beer on the planet. <laughs> well, you got to admire that in a way because they went like I said in that video for I think it was Street Four O Street Legal. I said at least they went all out. They didn't just make kind of a bad beer. They made a horrendously bad beer. And you got to give them some. There's some, you know, admiration for that. Like, you know, you're going to make the actually the worst beer on the planet. So, I mean, I drank the camo. I went up to Detroit and I was walking all around Detroit. Yes, I was. And I bought a bunch of camos. And um, I mean, yeah, I, threw, I, I had one glass and I threw it at the fence. You know, I mean, it was beyond belief. <laughs> I don't know if you ever had any of those, Brandon. I have not. Um... It's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean the worst uh, worst products I've had are stuff like the limeritas and stuff like that, where uh, just you just don't really taste good. Those are bad. But if you drink a Camo Triple X, what is it called? The um, I don't know. They have these bizarre names. If you drink one of those, and you drink a Schlitz Small Liquor, you would think Schlitz Small Liquor is the best beer ever made. Ever made? You would think you're drinking a uh, Dogfish Head 90 Minute IPA. Compared to that, it's beyond belief. In a way, it's good that I, I think everybody ought to drink those things because it, it, mm -hmm. it starts to put things in perspective. Back to this. I think this beer has a little hoppiness. It does. All right. Here we um, go. I found uh, what you talked about on the 40-ounce uh, malt liquor website, the uh, Camo uh, High Gravity Lager. Uh, it's uh, five X's, so it's a uh, pentella. Un, uh, it, it's every time I think of those beers, I grit my teeth. Mm. It's that bad. It's like it's memorable though. You'll never forget it. if you drink our Earthquake High Gravity Twelve Percent, you will never forget the flavor. Right. Because every time you think of the flavor, you'll grit your teeth and try not to vomit. Try not to vomit. It's that bad. It's unbelievable. It's like how could this be allowed to be sold? It's like the United States government regulates everything, but they allow this to be sold. It's un tastes like 98.6 degree P and kind of burns my throat on the way down like hard liquor. Yeah. It, it, it. <laughs> when I drank stack, I was in Beaumont on us highway 90 and I stopped at a really kind of like they would say in England, a dodgy place. I mean, I was kind of scared. I thought I probably could be shot. I mean, there's a pretty good chance I'll be killed right now, but you know, you, I bought it and you know, I went in there anyway. So I bought it. And I thought, God only knows how this is going to be. And I bought that um, that that stack. I would not if a, if you have a person that's suicidal, do not buy that beer, because that is going to push you over the edge. You're going to jump over the bridge, off the bridge, you know. <laughs> but uh, okay, getting back to the hobby. Um, right. 
I'm just, you know, you're saying, oh, it's a rant. It is a rant because um, I'm tired of the um, the bull crap. But anyway, here's a here's a bottle I bought in Sh in Shreveport. I wanted to bring up Shreveport. Okay. Schlitz malt liquor, twelve ounce bottles. When's the last time you ever seen this? Never. Yeah, never. I'll tell you what. I don't know what it is about Shre Shreveport, Louisiana. That has got to be the biggest Schlitz town in America. Yeah, there are some towns that are like that with certain brands like Baton Rouge with Magnum. It's just you go to about every gas station, you can find a 40 of Magnum. It's incredible. I went to Shreveport, right? I'm driving up there. And now somebody's going to say, why would you go to Shreveport? Well, you know, it's a nice town. It's not a destination town. But um, I went there to go watch a minor league baseball game, in fact. But I was driving up there, and the first thing, when I was getting close to Shreveport, I saw a Schlitz 18-wheeler truck, delivery truck. How often do you see an 18-wheeler delivery beer truck with Schlitz on it? Uh, I've never seen that. Yeah, right, like never. Okay, so that – that I, I was, like, stunned, all right? So it's like Schlitz – the beer that made Milwaukee famous. And I'm like, okay, this is incredible. I'll never see this again in my life. I get to Shreveport. I, I go to, you know, I went to the game. I went to the minor league game, the Shreveport uh, team, which is no longer in business. But anyway, you know, they moved to a different city. But I, I had to do the beer shop, and you know that. So I'm going around to different stores. Everywhere I went, everywhere. It's Schlitz 12 packs, Schlitz uh, six packs. Every variety you ever, you ever wanted to see. So I saw a, a six pack of Schlitz malt liquor. Well, you know what I did. There was no question I was buying it. Um, but uh, it's incredible. It's like, that is like the greatest Schlitz city. It's like, you go to Shreveport, you, you're going to find it on tap. You're going to find it in all the stores. It's like everybody in Shreveport is thinking, well, you know, Schlitz, that's really popular. Actually, it isn't. <laughs> Except in your town. Yeah, pretty much. I, mean, I went to a, a – well, I ran – I was talking to people yesterday, and I was drinking uh, some Schlitz, and he said, oh, man, I still – I still can't believe people still drink Schlitz. I said, that's about all I drink these days. Well, I'll say this about the regular Schlitz beer. It's one of the most pleasant and enjoyable mass-produced beers you can get your hands on. I agree. If you can find it, um, I was in Oklahoma. Might have been, you know, it was in the Texas Panhandle, I believe it was on old U.S. Highway 66, and I bought this. Wow, that's a nice looking can. Beautiful can. Um, it's a brick wall with the uh, the bull. Uh, when I saw that, I gasped. Gasped. I said, "Well, buy it." Um, so I got the gold bowl, of course, you know, what you're drinking out of. Right. Here's the red bowl. This is the second Schlitz malt liquor, which came out in 1984, in fact. Hmm. I remember back in 1986, I wrote a letter to uh, Stroh's Brewing, and I said, um, is there any way you could send me information on the beers you brew? About a week, I got this huge packet of all the beers is fascinating you know because it's uh it was a pretty extensive um oh and by the way if if somebody does one of these hangouts online and you're looking at the thing backwards what you have to realize is that it's backwards to you mm -hmm. for everybody else it's correct right and I, I saw a guy doing that and he was saying everything's backwards i gotta fix it and i told him i said look uh it's not backwards it's backwards to you it's not backwards to the audience yeah have you ever seen the 40 ounce bottles of the schlitz uh gold bowl or do they make those they do make them but i've not seen them um i bought this in new york city uh for some reason new york city some parts of new york city queens for instance uh they sell the schlitz red bull in cans and bottles. Uh, this is also 5.9% alcohol. It came out in 1984 and it has a different recipe. It's different. You know, you say, oh, it's just the same beer and a different label. No, it is not. 
Um, it's Schlitz XL. I don't know if you've ever had it. I have not. I'd like to try it. It's extra long. In other words, it's really weird. It's designed to have an extra long aftertaste. Hmm. Now, why you would want to have a beer that has an aftertaste that stays with you, I don't know. But they designed it for that reason. Um, people talk about whales. I'll tell you what, this is a whale. Okay. I went to Tallahassee, Florida. I don't know why this is the case, but if you go to U.S. Highway 27 in Tallahassee, Florida, uh, you can go in any convenience store. Doesn't matter which one. They're going to have Schlitz Bull Ice. Wow. I have never seen that one before. Oh, you'll burst into tears if you see this. It's oh. unbelievable. It's also 8.2%. Um, this is an iced version. They're taking Schlitz malt liquor and they're putting it down into the ice beer treatment. Ooh, that sounds really good. It's got that greenish gray label. Yeah, I see that. I'll tell you what, you drive to Tallahassee from Louisiana, it's a long drive and you're going to be sleepy at night. But you might say, well, I hope I can get to sleep. You drank this 32 ounce bottle, you're going to sleep. Oh, yeah. You really sleep well. It's incredible. Um, it's really different. It's unique. It's unlike any thing I've ever had. It's a uh, ice malt liquor. It's 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 strange. And it came out in 1994. Um, also have the uh, 24 ounce can. I bought this in Detroit last year. It, this is really strange because um, the chances of you seeing it are minimal. Hmm. It's weird. Um, and, and, and another thing about the Schlitz malt liquor is it says the Stroh Brewing Company. Hmm. 1982, they 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 uh, label all their cans Stroh Brewing. But if you get the Schlitz beers, talking about the regular Schlitz, it's labeled Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company. Right. Just like uh, Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. So I don't know why they decided to put the Schlitz malt liquor line underneath the Stroh Brewing Company. Um, Hmm. I mean, none of them are real companies. They're all owned by Paps, but it is odd. So, you know, it's, a in, it's an interesting collection. Um, I, agree. I caught a lot of heat. You know, I caught a lot of heat from people because I did a, a video review of um, Fuller's Vintage Ale. It's a fantastic beer. It's about 8% alcohol. You drink a 500 milliliter of that, you're going to have a real problem um, <laughs> not the S, the letter S, without slurring, but um, yeah, incredible beer. But in the video that I did on Mardi Gras Day 2014, I was talking about the um, vintage ale, and then um, I said, well, uh, you know, this is better than the Schlitz VSL. But then I brought up the fact that it wasn't appreciably better. Oh man, all hell broke loose. But um, I don't know if the people understand the word appreciably. <clears throat> anyway, you know, yeah. if you if you wanna if you wanna um, check out malt liquors, and I don't know if anybody would want to, especially considering the stigma that exists today, mostly unfairly. Agreed. Although the companies did feed into it, I mean, they chose to make those commercials but if somebody said let me try out malt liquors i would highly recommend doing a um a schlitz malt liquor liquor um journey right the OML, go to the uh red bull then you check out the ice malt liquor and the um gold bull and i think as far as mass-produced beers they're incredible i mean in the context of mass-produced beers I agree. I mean, they're not they're not bad beers, and it's one of those things where it's just when people sometimes they they try to they decide, okay, we're going to approach malt liquor with open mind. They say, well, this isn't bad at all. So, of course, it's not bad. Of course, it's not. I mean, if you think it's bad, then it's your opinion. But at least you tried it. There's a difference. <laughs> hey, look, they're not bad. Um, exactly. In fact, they're pretty darn good to me. Yeah. But then, like some people would say, yeah, but you're an idiot. Okay, you know, I don't believe that, but, you know, it could be true. Yeah. Uh, 
Some people don't like steak, but uh, I don't call them idiots for not liking steak. Hey, you know, I have an opinion on the issue. Like someone said, beer is not about having fun. Of course it. I mean, why wouldn't it be about not? What? That's crazy. I mean, you, that's, that's, that's an actual statement someone made. Beer is not about having fun. That same guy made the, this statement, too. He said, um, he said, um, would you want someone without a college degree doing brain surgery on you? How does that make any sense? I mean, let let's just get right down so to it. The guy, the guy he said that to said, "So you're comparing drinking beer to brain surgery?" It, there there is no comparison. But let me tell you, I mean, you come home after a 12, 13 hour, fourteen hour day, you have this in your fridge, and you you, you might not have had the best day, but you know what? You go through this forty ounce bottle, or even you know what? You don't have to do that. Go for the sixteen ounce can, and you know what? With this beer, it. You, you have that, then okay, it's all good. I mean, maybe if you had a really bad day, you might want the 40 ounce bottle and quit. But yeah. is it the greatest beer in the world? No. no. But then on the other hand, do the Schlitz, or I should say Paps, do they claim that it's the greatest beer? No, they do not. No. It's a pleasant, mild, um, enjoyable beer. Yeah. It's flavorful? Yes, it's flavorful. Is it hoppy? A little bit. It's a little bit hoppy. You can t pick up the hops. Are they the, are they using the best hops? Doubtfully. Are they using the best malts? Probably not. They're probably using six row. They're using corn syrup. They're using you know. But it is enjoyable. Yeah. To me. Now we talked about Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. I'll just say this: there's no context to it. Baton Rouge is a huge magnum malt liquor town yes. for a reason. I'm just bringing that up. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of those things where it's. Uh, I will even put this out there: you can be using the best ingredients and still make a bad beer. Oh Lord, we've you we've experienced can. that. We've experienced that many times in our craft beer journey, have we not? Yes, we have. But that's also part of the hobby as well, is that you're taking a chance to explore something. You just want to know more about uh, the beer um, and stuff like that. So that's a risk you take. I mean, there's some beer craft beers out there, and I love craft beer. There's some that are just really awesome. I mean, there's pretty much the Stone Arrogant Bastard line. Love oh. it. Great beers. Uh, very underrated, if you ask me, these days. Oh, and the Double Bastard. Double Bastard is awesome. I, I managed to find uh, some leftover bottles yeah, in one store. I won't say where it is because people are going to start rating it. I'm not going to tell everybody online. I don't even watch these videos anyway, but I kind of don't want to know where I can find another bottle of Double Bastard when I want to get it. Yeah, um, and uh, I do know a place where you can get the Shipyard um, Double Old Thumper, hmm. which is 11% alcohol. Oh, yeah. It's beyond <laughs> – I tell you what. I made a mistake. I drank that whole 22 ounce beer in one night when I did a, a video review with Jeff Lyons, uh, New England beer reviews. I was like, wow, <laughs> that was a mistake. Uh, but it's so good. It's like you just want to keep drinking. It's so good. Schlitz Malt Liquor, I'm not rating it. This is not a review. This is an examination. If I was rating it, um, you know, I could say it's a B plus. It's very good. I could be talked into giving it an A minus because within the style American malt liquor, it's a champ. Yeah. It's a champ. I would agree with you on that one. Absolutely. 100%. Um, let me um, read these and then we're going to close out because can't go on all day. I'm going to read this. Uh, they sent me this in 1996 or seven. Stroh sent me this back when they were in business. Um, really nice brochure. They went through all their beers, the, the macro beers in their craft beer line. But it says, um, yeah, that's right. Stroh's made craft beers, you know, before they had craft beer. But um, Schlitz Malt Liquor, first offered to the world in 1965, is the standard, is the standard for the malt liquor category. I agree with that. I would agree. It's combination of, in, of premium ingredients. Okay, well, okay. And outstanding smoothness. Oh, it's smooth. Very smooth. 
that's the problem. You can you can just okay. You can get in trouble with that beer. You really can. You have a few of those, you can get in trouble. Outstanding smoothness give this product an edge on all others. I agree with that. I think Schlitz malt liquor does have an edge, a slight edge on the other malt liquors. Uh, acquired by Stro in 1982, this malt liquor remains one of the industry's leading malt liquors with over 30% of the market. Yeah, well, maybe today it might be 5%. <laughs> right, because, well, it's pitiful. Yeah. All ice. This was the first. Now, let me. You want me, want me to read this? Go for it. Bull Ice. This was the first ice brewed malt liquor produced by the Stroh Brewery Company. They didn't say it was the first ice brewed malt liquor. This was brewed by them. In early, 80, uh, early 1994, as a line extension, the brew is ice lagered at sub freezing temperatures until ice crystals form, giving this malt liquor a rich, crisp taste. No doubt about that. And strong as you know what. Red Bull malt liquor. Uh, this malt liquor was established in 85 by Stroh Brewing Company to appeal to the malt liquor consumer. I like how they, they uh, how, <laughs> I love their, uh, the way they write this stuff. As a line extension of Schlitz malt liquor, it offers great flavor at a value price. <laughs> Red Bull is brewed in the traditional malt liquor manner <laughs> for extra smoothness and mild flavor. You know what? We, we can laugh, but it really is true. Uh, and then, um, let's see. Schlitz. I think this came out before the Schlitz ice even hit the market. Yeah. Oh, wait. Ice bull. But, you know, it had a different label. They call it bull ice. Let me see if they talk about that. Mm. Bull ice. Here we go. Oh, wait, I already talked about it. Well, you know, you drank too much of it, you start to. All right. Well, anyway, um, it's a shame other people couldn't join us in this for this morning time exploration. But, um, you know, it is what it is. You, if you can't get it, you can't get it, right? Right. And uh, that's just the way it is sometimes. But um, at least we can sort of get it. Um, if I was going to buy malt liquor around here, and, you know, really, I actually don't ever really buy malt liquor, but uh, unless you consider natural ice a malt liquor, and it's not really, but right. I mean, it, is, it is, but it isn't, you know, but um, if I was going to buy it around here, I would be, uh, have, I would have to buy Mickey's Old English 800, uh, Colt 45, or uh, Magnum at one store, one mm. That's it. Oh, steel reserve to 11, 6%, excuse me. Yeah, 6%, I would take that over the 8% uh, personally. Uh, if you want to try to drink a 40 of steel reserve uh, 8%, well, have fun. Yeah, but it's really, that beer is hard to take. You know, that steel reserve 8% is harsh. It is. And, uh, it's now, also like drinking a loaf of bread. Oh, it's heavy. It's like drinking a meal. Um, my daughter, now interestingly, and we'll close this out, my daughter, she, um, you notice, you might notice she does video reviews with me from time to time. She does zero research on beer. And in, in fact, she has practically no interest in the beer industry, aside from she likes to taste different things that she buys at the store randomly. That's as far as it goes. Um, and I think the first video review she ever did with me was the Chimay Red Cap. Right. So it's not like she's drinking gutter filth all the time. Um, we did the uh, Steel Reserve 211 triple export, you know, the black can, black label. Right, right. I know what you're talking about. Which I can't find here. Apparently it's sold in Mississippi, though. Uh, she said that was one of the best beers she'd ever tried. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. And she drank Chimay Red Cap. And, uh, I mean, she's drank, you know, like Married Sue, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, she, but she doesn't care. It's like people will say, well, you know, uh, uh, Roka Ford 10 is better than um, Shock Top. Twisted pretzel. That's an opinion. I mean, she would say, 
But she would come back with something like, yeah, but I prefer the twisted pretzel. It tastes better to me. And then right. somebody might say, well, you have no palate. You're an idiot. And she would say, I don't even care. <laughs> All right. So, you know, that's a good attitude to have. It's like, okay, whatever. I will not hate you because of beverages. Sorry. Go right. pick a fight with somebody else. There's a lot of problems in this world. And hating people over beverages should not be one of the problems in this world that we're dealing with. I agree. I agree 100%. I mean, in the, the day, it's... Uh it's a hobby to us and we are passionate about it too as much as we'd be passionate about beer, but you know, they, it's just beer. I mean, if you don't like a certain beer, then don't drink it. There's no don't drink it. Why would you hate somebody because of a beverage? It makes no sense. It's insane. Yeah. It's much like saying, Hey, if you, if you don't see this outrage over, let's say craft macaroni and cheese. Okay. If you don't like craft macaroni and cheese, people aren't going to freaking eat it. They're not going to post. They're not right. going to gonna, like track people down and say, I'm going to find that guy because he preferred Ritz over Triscuit. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, that's how silly it is. And it, that's very unfortunate because it's like, wait, Okay, look, I understand there's a degree of passion that can go into the hobby and stuff like that. But there's also a point where it can go overboard. And yeah, get a grip, have fun with it, and don't be a maniac. That's that's three good points, I think, for the beer hobby. Get a grip, have fun with it, and don't be a maniac. Right, right. Well, um, I know you, you can't always join us now with work and whatever, but, I mean, you know, people's lives do have to – take precedence over a hobby but if you can right. join us for um the one we're doing wednesday which is uh third shift and if that's not the most dying brand on the market i don't know what is we'll be no. glad for you to join us i will li very very likely not be able to join you for that one uh because right now i'm just unsure of what my schedule is like for uh next week i've heard i've I'm not really going to get into uh, what my schedule is because I really don't know what it is next week. Yeah, well, that's, un that's understandable, of course. So anyway, if I ever, let's say if I ever took a road trip to the Baltimore area, would you like me to pick you up some, um, oh, let's say like a 40-ounce bottle of Schaefer or a six-pack of 12-ounce cans of Schaefer beer? I'd be fine with I'd be fine with either or both, honestly. But you know, I'm also the kind of guy that says, I'm not going to turn down beer. I mean, I'll, I'll buy you a beer, you know, stuff like that. I'm cool with that. <laughs> or even a six pack of pint cans. Oh, that sounds awesome. That sounds better, in my opinion. All right. Well, thank you for joining, joining me, and thank you, folks, for watching this. To us, you might think that's not interesting, but to us, it is interesting. Well, you know, video production about Schlitz original malt liquor. Thanks. Thank you.